All right. Thank you so much for staying with the Monday Report. The conversation begins right now. Send in your views at Trevor Mbidi at Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Monday Report. What will it take to maintain peace during elections? That is the question we are asking you. Let me introduce my guest one more time. Reverend Dr. Samuel Kobe, a chair for NCIC, is here with us in studio. Thank you so much for making time. It's a pleasure. Evida Elizabeth Atien is also here with us. She's a women's rights advocate, but has also gone through post-election violence. She says she's comfortable sharing her news and her stories, so we'll listen to her as well. Thank you for making time. Yeah. Millicent Ocho Atieno, Director of Local Capacities for Peace International, is also joining us live in studio. And James Mushina Kinyagi, a coordinator National IDP Network, is also joining us from Elroy. Thank you all for making time. And Reverend Kobe, I'll start with you on this. There's been a lot of controversy about this term, Madoa Doa. What does that mean according to the NCIC and why is it so controversial? Well, thank you, uh, Trevor, for having me uh, this, uh, this evening. And uh, I want to uh, greet Kenyans. This is the first time I'm appearing here in a new year. Happy New Year. And uh, we look forward to 2022 uh, to be a year that we hope uh, is not going to uh, see uh, much uh, of uh, what people are fearing, and that is the violence uh, during uh, a year of elections. Yeah. Now, uh, we have taken uh, the usage of the term Mandoadoa very seriously because uh, it is a, a word that when used in Kenya uh, evokes memories. Uh, and uh, we know that uh, uh, in 2007, 2008, this word was used and uh, it went all the way to the Hague. And therefore, it is not just uh, 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 another word in Kenya, which means it spots here and there, mm. but it is part of the International Criminal Court lexicon. And uh, we have heard it being used by judges in uh, uh, The Hague. Now, what is critical about the word Madwadoa is that uh, it fits within uh, a process that uh, we have seen in history. Situations that lead to massacres and even to genocide. When you use the word Madwadoa, in Kenya, uh, it is understood as when you use cockroaches in uh, uh, Rwanda. Yeah. Now, Rwanda. what happens yeah. when uh, people uh, want to uh, uh, treat others differently, yeah. uh, they assign certain symbols to them or terms. In Rwanda, when the Hutus used uh, cockroaches referring to Tutsis, uh, it is used and people are socialized uh, yeah. in such a way that when it comes to killing a Tutsi, you are not killing a human being, you are killing a cockroach. Uh, it has been used in other parts of the world yeah. And this, those who have studied how genocide and massacres uh, happen, yeah. it always happens like that. You classify a people, yeah. you put symbols to them, then you dehumanize them. Mm. And this is the most critical part, yeah. dehumanize. Okay. So that uh, when you are dealing with that particular individual, is not a human being you are dealing with, is uh, a spot yeah. or a cockroach, is an animal or even a, a disease. Yeah. So that is why we are taking it very seriously because we knew where it took us in 2008. Yeah. There's no denying that uh, it is a word that was used that mobilized people, incited the people, yeah. and therefore it lent yeah. to the killings that we had. That is why as yeah. NCIC, we are taking it extremely seriously. Yeah. And uh, I have heard people who say, well, Mandoandoa is not in the Constitution, it's not in our law books and all that. And it, it need not be. Yeah. It is simply should be a word that, uh, because we know what it meant and what 
uh, 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 it, it caused, the kind of violence it caused, then yeah. as a people, we have to agree yeah. that uh, we should not use it. Okay. But Chair, there are those who are accusing you of double standards. In fact, let me bring up a tweet from Kipchumba Murkome and his Delgeo Maraguet Senator. He sent this to us. He says, sad how NCIC Kenya led by Chair Reverend Dr. Samuel Kobe has two sets of laws, one for UDA Kenya and another for Azimio. No wonder Raila Odinga and Governor Kimemi have not been summoned over the use of the word Madoa Doa. It's an animal farm. That is not true at all. Uh, first of all, as NCSC, we are not using double standards. Uh, I have heard this before, and uh, including Honorable Mokomen had actually one time even talked to me, with, to me, and we talked about it. When I give the list of the people that, as NCSC, we have dealt with who are involved in hate speech, it occurs right across. And uh, I don't have time to go through name by name, but we have actually dealt with the, the people according to how the context and the way in which they have expressed hate speech. Yeah. Uh, in this particular case, I'm aware that uh, uh, Governor Kimemia had used the word uh, Maduadoa. He made it very clear that within the Jubilee Party, and he was using it within that very limited context. That uh, he, w he said that Mandoadoa that we have within the Jubilee Party, we have to deal with that. And he explained it when he used it. Uh, when it comes to the right Honorable Rai Lodinga, I think what I've heard is where he uh, invited young people to be his jesh, et cetera, et cetera. And this clip was sent to me, also trying to show that uh, we are uh, being biased. But it was very clear, uh, Honorable Raila went on to explain word by word what he meant by judge, what he meant by bullet, what he meant by fire, and all that. It is true that uh, that is not a very palatable language anyway, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a matter that uh, we, we, we should take up with, with him. So that is very different from the way uh, Senator Lintori used Madoa Doa in, uh, in, 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 in Western Nigeria. The context itself, the place itself, as I say, invokes memories. But it's not the same way uh, when it's used in other, in other situations. Yeah. Secondly, I wanted to say that uh, we have uh, uh, already uh, summoned other politicians who have uh, uh, used uh, ones that could uh, be equated uh, with uh, hate speech. And uh, some of them have come and recorded the statements, so we are following that. So we are not discriminating against the uh, UDA, yeah. and uh, we are not uh, using it uh, 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 in any biased way against or for any other uh, party. If it is ODM, in fact, when I look and I looked, I checked even before I came here, quite a good number of politicians that uh, we have dealt with before are ODM members. And we have ANC members, and we have Kano members. Yeah. So UDI cannot really uh, hide, you know, behind this word and accuse NCIC, yeah. which I, and I would say uh, unjustifiably, yeah. that we are uh, uh, being double. Uh, we are applying double standards here. That yeah. is not correct. But what then is the problem? Because if you say you've dealt with them. What does dealing with them mean? Because there are some people who are saying you, have, you need to take more punitive action. Yes, uh, we have dealt with them according to the mandate of NCIC. And I have explained in these platforms before, and I don't know why Kenyans uh, don't uh, want to accept that uh, there is so much that uh, uh, NCIC can do within the present law. And uh, what they should be doing is to really uh, deal with the DPP and with the courts. So when we have taken people to DPP and they have been taken to court,
is no longer our responsibility. And therefore, you cannot say that uh, NCIC is ineffective because we have been done our part according to the mandate that, uh, that we have. I have explained before that one way now we are going to deal with the hate speech uh, and the hate mongers and all that yeah. is to work with the other agencies so that uh, we see the mandate of uh, uh, NCSE, the mandate of uh, other agencies together, we have what I call, we have a multiple challenges yeah. to any individual who is involved in hate speech yeah. because other agencies are involved. Once we begin to work together, and I am pleased to uh, announce that uh, the uh, decision of the Chief Justice yeah. to create special courts yeah. so that uh, we don't have these cases dragging over and, uh, for months and months. Yeah. That's one way of working together with the judiciary, with the DPP, yeah. with the uh, EACC, etc. So okay. that is what we are doing and this is the difference, I would say, is going to make uh, as uh, we move forward. Okay. I'll come to you and talk about the role of the people as well, because I know you have the list of shame, but it's the same people still elect the people that you have in your list of shame. We'll talk about the role of the people in just a bit. But Evida, you have gone through this firsthand, and I appreciate you having the courage to talk about your story. What really transpired? How did it start and what happened? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, thank you so much, Trevor, uh, for the opportunity. It's my first time on set, so I really appreciate the platform. Um, my name is Evide Elizabeth Atieno, and uh, I am a women's rights advocate because we, do, we deal with the advocacy issues on women, and I work with, with a, an organization called Grace Agenda. Grace Agenda is an organization that works with women who are survivors of the post-election period. And it was founded by a woman who is a survivor herself, that is Jacqueline Terre, because at that time, people saw people who were killed, people saw the IDPs, people saw the houses that were burnt, but who saw the women who were gang raped, the women who were raped, who saw that? The government and its focus has been on the IDPs, okay? But what about, who talks about the women who are sexually violated at that time? And I say, I talk about that because I am a survivor, like you said, and uh, it happened in 2007 during the post-election period on 31st of, of 2007. And uh, I was coming from a friend's house. I was heading to my stepsman place. And the election were announced, like, say, around 5, 6 p.m. And uh, now I was running along. I, I was in Karibangi North. And on the way, on a certain bridge, there is a river, I met with this gang of, of, of men, you know? And um, they, 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 they greeted me at first like, about a black beauty, and I was really scared to an extent that I thought I had sent back, and I did not. And they spoke to me to a, in a language that I didn't understand and I could not reply to. Trevor, what really hurts me so much is that at that time, I was not a voter. I was only 16. But I had to pay a price because of my tribe because of the, I was coming from the opposite tribe, if, I'm, if you allow me to say so. Because some people decided that they, they were going to show their loyalty to someone who is their tribesman, you know? And that day, I was gang raped by I don't know how many men. I can't tell because I was hit at the back of my head and I passed out. But the following morning, I, I woke up and I smelled blood in the air, you know. And when, when, I, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I tried to, work, to get up, I was in so much pain. It was so, it, it is traumatizing to me up to this time. Um, 
I'll just say this. It's a pity that we live in a country that people like Lituri are protected. It's a pity, Trevor, because how do you protect someone who stands and talks about Madoa Doa and in the manner in which he tells it? It's like if you're in, in Eldoret, you must be in support of UDA. It, it's, it's like it's a must with the way he tells it in that clip that there are people in the central and in Meru supporting the DP and there are people when you wanna sumbua, hawataki, how madawadoa lazima tuwatoe. It's a high time that Lituri comes to us as Kenyans and tells us what he meant with kutoa madawadoa. Does it mean that how madawadoa wawekwe nda niagari and they are moved to another place? What exactly did he meant? I understand he's been protected when they say they meant that they vote six piece. Trevor, was it so hard for him to go straight to the point and say this time we are going the six piece way? Was it so hard for him? And I'm just here, Trevor, to, to just say to Kenyans that I don't want to see any woman who has suffered like me because Trevor, I went through so much. I had to drop out of school. I got a baby out of that. I was so bitter to an extent I harmed my child because of, I, I, I just didn't know how to take the anger out of me. I didn't know how to do it. I had nobody to talk to. My family disowned me because they kept on asking me whom the father of the child is. To an extent, I had to run away from home. I ran to Madhari, that is where I live up to now. Okay. And I thank God that one day I met with this woman, Jacqueline, the founder of Grace Agenda. Yeah. And from there, I have been given platform after platform and I have been trained on transitional justice whereby we engage the government. Yeah. Because Trevor, there are a lot of women who have gone through. I know, I know, I know, I know 80 women that we work with. Yeah. And I haven't talked about the women in the Waki report. I haven't talked about the women in the TJRC report. The government has not even given some justice to us. And we say justice delayed is justice denied. Right. We have not healed yet, yeah. and now we, 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 are, we are on the same path that we were in, in the 2007 post-election violence. Yeah. And Trevor, I just want to say it here, the Jubilee government has failed to reparate survivors of sexual violence. Okay. Because maybe it means that it does not, when, when you say I was affected, when I say I was, I, 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 don't, I don't have any evidence to show it, Trevor. But the, maybe someone who lost their farm can show it that indeed this is the title deed that I had. I don't have that farm anymore. But Trevor, what about me? What evidence do I have to tell the government somebody took advantage of me because that was the situation? All right. Again, I must say this. Yeah. The government sometimes don't understand when we say reparate survivors of sexual violence. I will say it, it is their duty yeah. to reparate the survivors, to give them justice, why? Because that day they failed to protect the women. Okay. And I'm just speaking to Kenyans that before you, you, before you take action too far, yeah. because of a leader that you are in support of, think of women like me. Okay. There are so many out there, there are so many who have children, so many families were broken. Yeah. Some, some, got, some were infected with HIV, Trevor, yeah. and I, I don't think that is the way that we want to go. All right, David, I'm, I'm so sorry about what you had to go through. Thank you so I, much, Trevor. I, I can't believe what you went through and there's no amount of reparation that can pay you back for that. It's, it's true. It's a horrible Thank situation. And let's, Thank James you. Mushina is also with us here. James Mushina Kanyagi, a coordinator, National IDP Network, is joining us from Eldred. James, what, what happened to you? What was your story like? Thank you. Thank you, Trevor, for having me on this panel. Thank you so much because this is very important to us. Now, let me first of all say, Pole, to our sister for whatever that she went through. The story she's narrating is similar to herself and even to the people that we 
we, we went through the same experience here in the county of West Nisho. Let me say, it is very unfortunate, first of all, that the word Madwadoa might have come from West Nigishu. <laughs> because West Nigishu, according to us, was the epicenter of this violence. And now, it seems, uh, once again, the genesis of the same thing is coming out of West Nigishu. This is very unfortunate for us. Let me go to my experience, Trevor. Madwadoa and the other words that have been used to are used in West Nigishu much earlier before even 2007. 2007 is where the, the, the whole thing opened up and it turned into violence like we experienced. Let me say we went through a very difficult period because immediately the, the results were announced. We were promised protection a day before because we had a meeting with the, with the provincial administration over some few houses that had been touched on the 29th. So we had a meeting and we were promised there was a going to be protection. But then on the evening of the 31st, the protection that was promised to us never came by. We were attacked from all sides. And by around the midnight, there was no house that was standing. And if there was one, it was burnt the next day. Now what happened to us? We left our homes to the DO's office or to the provincial administration office, we did completely nothing. Not even address, not even uh, nothing, nothing, because the homes were burnt, the stores were burnt. We left our animals behind because we couldn't carry them to that office. And so we ended there with completely nothing, not even a blanket. You can see how this tra traumatizing this was. Mze, like Muchina, is there with his wife with his entire family. There is no food, there is no water, there is nothing to cover ourselves, and we remained there for 15 days. Let me tell you the experience was horrific. I have already mentioned that there was no water, but there was a borehole there <laughs> that the Ascaris were using to wash their cars. That's the water we used. For the 15 days that we were there, because we could not be allowed to step outside the compound, the DC is com the DO's compound to fetch water from the neighboring people there because they, they did not welcome us. So we stayed there without food, only praying and crying to God to come to us, to, to, to come and save us. Anybody who wanted even to go out of that place could not make it. There was no means of transport. We could not access any vehicles. The shopping center surrounding the DO's office was a very small one. Whatever that was there in the shops was was used and it got finished within the first three days. So you couldn't shop, you couldn't buy anything from the shops because there was nothing. And there was no supply from anywhere because no vehicles were moving to yeah. bring the things that we could probably require. It was terribly, Trevor. It was terrible. M Mishina, but then, I, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Mushina. Yes. Have you, ever been, you. have you ever been able to go back to your piece of land and uh, what is there right now? And then before I come to that place, because I wanted to give you the experience as a whole, Yes. I was able to come back to my piece of land. I'm back at home now. Okay. I'm sitting in my house, that house that the government built for me. Yeah. But I wanted to give you the experience. Now, after, after that time, we were, we, were, we were able to be evicted yeah. and we were taken to the electoral ground. Yeah. The Eldoret showground, that's where we met real suffering because it took the, 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 the civil society and all the well wishers a whole two weeks to organize themselves to start feeding us. <laughs> During that time, it was just survival for the fittest. Whatever you could get to eat, you eat, and there's nothing. You just stay like that and watch, waiting for nothing, hoping yeah. for nothing, but just there waiting to die or whatever that would have happened. It was terrible. However, we managed to, to stay on and then the, 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 the government and the Welsh wishers and all those other people that were involved came on board and they started giving us food and everything that we required. Yeah. But then don't forget, Trevor, we were sleeping outside. We, were, we had nothing to cover ourselves on. <laughs> we, we slept in the shades in the showground until we were, the, the, the Red Cross was able to come on board with the, with the tents, and then we had somewhere to put our heads under. Yeah. That, 
as a whole five months under that tent. The experience there was that although there was food to eat, there was nothing else. Yeah. Let me tell you, I experienced a lot of family disintegration when we were in that camp. Our children were devastated. There was no school. There was nothing they were looking upon except sitting there and waiting for nothing. Looking upon a parent who is helpless, who has nothing to offer, who has no food. <laughs> it was terrible. So when this thing is mentioned to us, it reminds of those, it reminds those very bad times that we went through. Yeah. Let, let us now live there. We now come back to our farms over the, during the operation route in Umani. Yeah. That's what, that was another terrible time now. Because we came back to our neighbors, but we stayed in a camp somewhere and they were all of us spread in our farms. We were not farming. We were not growing anything. We were just seated there waiting for peace and reconciliation, peace talks and all that. The experience we went through is that nobody would like to go through it again. The effects that were there due to this post-election virus, the Trevor were terribly bad, first for our children. They missed school for almost one year. Okay. That was never completed. Come to the family as a unit. I want to tell you that very many people lost their families there. Some, some, some families just broke up because now who is who where? You can't say your husband who has nothing, who, has, who can offer anything. This was, this was the genesis of many families breaking down. Okay. Now, even when we came back now, as you asked me, I'm at home now. The government just gave us this small house and a water tank. I am a farmer. Yeah. I have five acres of land here. The government gave us one, one 10 kg bag of maize seed and one 50 kg bag of fertilizer. That is what is called lasting solution by the government to the IDPs that well, I went through this experience. Trevor, tell me, how do I recover? I have children in school, others are in colleges. In fact, I'm telling you as I sit here. Yeah. My daughter, who was in Moi University, was sent home, and she had just to go home. Where do I get the money? Okay. And even up to now, not so we, we have not been able to recover economically, even as we sit here. All right, David. Because after, after what was given to us, yeah, nothing else came up. Okay. Nobody followed us up to find out whether. Now that we have taken them back home, we have given them small houses, we have given them farm inputs for one acre. Yeah. How are these people going on? Okay. Nobody came back to check on that. All right. We have engaged the government as the National Edb Network all over this time. Okay. And I'm telling you, like my sister has said there, the government did not take care of us the way they were supposed to. Okay. All right. How David. did they deal with the education part of our children? Because yeah. now we have no done. Okay. Do, have we ever been compensated for anything? Let me tell you, Trevor, even as I sit here, yeah. when Maduado is being mentioned, I feel as if there is something hot flowing through my body. All because right. I lost completely everything and I had to come and start from zero. Okay. And as I sit here now, I cannot cheat you that I have been able to do anything because I cannot even move out of this small house okay. that the government built for me. Why? Because the, the background of my children was affected. Okay. I was affected economically. All I right. was affected as a family. Not to mention that psychologically, Trevor, yeah. the, we, were, we were thoroughly affected. And the only attention we were given yeah. uh, the small meetings that were held here and there uh, okay. to, 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 to tell the people that it is peaceful and now you can go back and stay. Okay. Let me say it is very unfortunate that this is coming out of us, out of what we as of now. Yeah. Because the level of interaction and cohesion we are enjoying right now, yeah. by that t statement, whichever way it is said, or we, however way, whichever, in whichever manner it is explained, okay. that cohesion and interaction has been tested. All right. So Thanks, I would yeah. like to say one thing or two before maybe I, I leave the, the space for the others. Yes. That it does not matter whether the statement said was explained to the NCIC. That's not an issue. The issue is how did the Kenyans take that statement? Because here, the victims are the Kenyans, not those leaders who are standing on platforms and saying what they want to say. Okay. Two, 
I would like to say that it is very important for our leaders to understand that even if I have a divergent view and I want to go my direction, I should be tolerated because I'm a Kenyan. Okay. There, there's no law anywhere saying that we have to go to one direction. Yeah. And let it, because I'm finding it very unfortunate that even after that statement was made in Eldoret by whoever that made it, it doesn't matter to us. The politicians have taken this now to the podium so that it is now an agenda to discuss on the podium, making the matter even more worse. Okay. I would, I, would, I would commend those people who have come to the podium and they have said they are sorry, it was wrong, it was sorry, not said the right way because they are building some hope into, in us. Okay. But for those who are exploiting the same so that now we have something to discuss on the podium and yeah. to, make a, to make a big issue out of it, I think they are doing the wrong thing. Okay. All right. Because they never look this way. Yes. Look across the country. There are now areas that are emerging problems of people being kind of being uh, evicted or being, 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 being targeted for one reason or the other. Okay. I would like to advise maybe the chairman as he sits there that this should be looked at from a different perspective. The political temperatures are rising every day. And this could be impacting down there to the Mwananchi while these people are looking at only the leaders. Okay. They can also come down and find out what is happening on the ground. I thought we had some, we had a very important, uh, a very, uh, a very able intelligence uh, unit in this country that can be able to do a very good job to, in finding out what's happening on the ground. So that the chairman and the others who are relevantly you involved in this matter yeah. can be able to move around and see exactly what is happening on the ground. All right. It's very unfortunate that this should be coming now. Yes. When we thought we were moving ahead and that we were now one people and that we were we we we, we are now going to an election as one people. Yeah. Of course we shall never be members of one political party. It will never happen. Okay. We shall never be Okay. Thanks, James. That's James Mishina, he's the coordinator national IDP network in Watching Issue, joining us from Eldred. Let me bring in Millicent to Uchi on this. Millicent, how do we ensure that there is peace during these elections? Because that really is the central question. And this is a very tricky subject because we have to bring out what people experienced, lest we forget. Because the impact is directly felt when you hear people's stories. That's when we, this emotion of uh, the statements that are being made comes into context. But Millicent, how then do we ensure that we go into a peaceful poll and people realize that they are brothers and sisters and they have to be bonded together no matter their political differences. Yeah, thank you very much, Trevor. And uh, I just I want to really applaud my colleagues for being so bold and brave and to share their lived experiences. For many people, they just think this, these are stories, and, and yet, you know, people have to deal with this on a daily basis. And every time we go into an electoral mode, people's lives are just messed up because the fear of what happened in the past happening again is what they have to deal with every single day. The trauma is real. And first of all, allow me to thank you and, and the Citizen TV for lending voice and allowing us to speak into the narrative because there's been too much politicking. This nation is full of politicians and I think we have very few leaders and that's a pity. Because if we had leaders, they would know what to say and how to say it because the interest of the human beings in this nation would be at the center of their conversations. And you have asked me about how do we ensure that we are peaceful? And how do we also make sure that democratic processes are run as such and that people can move on with their lives and not get stuck because of this democratic process or allegedly democratic process. So I want to say this from, from experience that we have had in the past. Many a times we have waited for things to go haywire for us to kick into action. I want to speak as a peace practitioner and we have been accused of firefighting. 
the human beings in this nation, the citizens and the governments, do not take enough time to invest on preventative measures, including the development partners that we work with. People just want to imagine that peace will just happen. It doesn't happen. It's a lot of hard work. And people must, you know, they must fold their sleeves. One thing people must do is, number one, appreciate the fact that we are interconnected and very much interdependent. Yeah. Number two, we have to also know that as long as poverty is so much entrenched in this nation, people will always be susceptible to being incited to violence or being manipulated or being used. And that takes away our peace and our harmony and our cohesiveness. Okay. The other thing that is also very critical for us to remember is that every time we start labeling and othering, you know, and zoning off areas that are supposed to be for everybody, then we know that we are entrenching divisions. Yeah. And those are destructive tendencies that have permeated our nation, and they must stop. And that means we have to work collectively to ensure that they are either reduced, broken down, or stopped okay. by whatever means within the law that right. we can use. All right. Millicent, I'll take what a quick we break. have done and what we continue to do now as, yeah. as we move um, towards the electioneering period. Yes. In the peace terms, we call them sometimes the conflict early warning signs. And I know sometimes we are blamed for being warmongers, but I think it's important to say that whenever people start giving speeches that are divisive, I think that is a sign that we need to rise up and counter that narrative. And thank you for giving us this platform to counter those narratives, because Kenya is for everybody, and so many people are peace-loving, and they don't want to remove any Madoadoas, even if there were Madoadoas. Madoadoa is beauty. There is beauty in diversity, and we must embrace our diversity and come to the sense of realizing that we are who we are because of the others around us. All right. Millicent. So I think yeah. it is also important, Trevor, as I finish, yeah. that we all come together and say we must not just politic. We need food on the table. We need services. We need to know that this electioneering period is just but a season. It will come and will go. This lead us. If they are leaders indeed, they should also know that human lives are at risk. And so whatever they say, they must be held to account and they must be responsible enough All to right. ensure that they don't take us to the dogs. They don't take this country to the All dogs. Right. Back to you, Trevor. All right. I have to take a quick break here on the Monday Report. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a difficult conversation to have, but we cannot continue to bury our heads in the sand. We all have to rise up, work together to ensure we maintain peace because I assure you, Anything goes south, it's only you and me who suffer. It's not the politicians. They have galvanized their cover. It's not them. Trust me on this. When we come back, take some of your feedback at Trevor Mbidi at Citizen TV. Can you use the hashtag Monday Report? We'll be back in just a bit.